this computer. I'm gonna ask, Jen, if you don't mind, since Marika is driving, would you mind praying, please? Okay. Lord, we thank you. We give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. We thank you for letting us see another day, oh God. We thank you for the good weather, the sunshine. We thank you that we're able to come together today, oh God, to learn more about your word and learn more about how you want us to live uh, live in this world today, oh God, to spread your love, oh God, to spread your light, oh God. And we give you thanks for this Bible study, oh God. Lord, equipping us with the tools, oh God, to go out and win souls and to go out and to do your kingdom work, oh God. We thank you that as we come together, oh God, we are learning from one another. We are learning from your word. And we thank you for Sister Lisa, oh God, always providing the platform for us to, to have the Bible study. And we thank you for Sister Marika, oh God, even though, oh God, she's running errands, oh God, she still has the time, oh God, to come back and to learn more about you, oh God. We pray that, you know, everyone that's coming on the line, oh God, that they will be blessed, oh God, with, oh God, a word. Everybody will be encouraged. Everybody will have a word, oh God, uh, an on-time word for what they're going through right now, what they want to learn, what they're seeking for, oh God. And I pray, oh God, that you bless, oh God, let the, that people will come onto the line today, oh God. And we just get, we put it in your place, in your hand, this Bible study today, oh God. We pray that you would do what you want to do in it, oh God. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We praise you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. And we yeah, ask, oh God, yeah. that you will have your way in this Bible study today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. What a powerful prayer. Thank you, Jen. Thank you so much. And may his word be fulfilled, all that you prayed. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. Morning, Michelle. Good morning. Morning. I see Sister Pam is joining. I'll just wait till she's on. Morning, Sister Pam. Good morning, Sister Lisa. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. <laughs> Maybe I should say happy Sabbath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, know, I know you're at work, right? Yes, I am. So um, as soon as I finish talking to you, I will mute. Okay, okay. No <laughs> so problem. good morning to everyone else. I don't know who else is on, but good morning, everyone. Good morning, Sister Pam. Good morning. That's so like Sister good Jen. Morning. Yes, yeah. Yes. Sister <laughs> Jen is on, Marika is on, Michelle is on. Good morning, Sister Marika. Who else? Michelle. Morning, everyone. Morning. You heard morning. me. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be with you guys. I'm ready to learn. Amen. <laughs> Me too. And be poured into. Yes. Uh, well, I'm glad. Right. That, glad that everyone is on today. Thank God for this. What is it? The sixth day of May, 2023. A day we yes. have seen before. A day we will never see again. But this is the day that He has made. We're going to rejoice in it. We're going to revel in His presence. And we're going to minister to Him and have Him minister to us, pour into us today by faith in Jesus name. Um, well, you, the scripture, before we start in the scriptures, actually, anybody want to share a testimony? Anyone have a testimony? There's no small testimony or an encouraging word for someone or just, again, you know, praising God, if anyone wants to do that. I'm going to give a, a one. I'm just thanking God for for um, just revelation. Sometimes he allows us, you know, in the, the muck of our thoughts, in the midst of, you know, so many things happening at once, some, he still allows us to have peace, you know, beyond all understanding. And, you know, I love the scripture, be still and know that I am God. And I just had a moment of stillness this week and in the midst of all the stuff going on for him to just speak clearly, you know, to me in a situation that, was having me, my mind buffering, <laughs> you know, keep on going around, but coming back to the same place. And so I thank him for causing me to stand and causing me to have, you know, an assured word um, in the midst of it and just having peace, you know, in the midst of my thoughts. So I give him glory, I give him praise. And I, and I pray for that in, in if anyone else is experienced, experiencing that where you you know just a number of moving parts at the same time yet you still want to feel like your your feet are planted on solid ground and you know 
you know, at least where your mind should be or, or even where he wants you to move in what direction. So I, I speak that over any of us, even to now or even in a present, I mean, a future situation in the present and in the future, um, by God's grace. Anybody want to say anything? Anything about your week? Anything you want to, that's your, you meditated on that you thought is a good nugget to share or anything. Anybody wants to say anything before we start? Go ahead, Sister Pam. Thank you, Sister Lisa. Um, I'm giving God thanks and praise from the bottom of my heart for you and um, all these awesome topics that God is giving you. Uh, last week, I didn't get to um, follow up with the with the um, <laughs> with what you were teaching because I'm at work and honestly, by the time I turn around back to the phone, you all were gone. No. <laughs> All right. Well, thank God but, for technology. Um, <laughs> right. That that you recorded and I could hear what happened after. So um, I'm blessed um, by what your topic last week, um, talking about the gate. Mm -hmm. And um, thank God I listened to your recording because I had a very challenging week. And it was just by listening to... Um, your your topic and your teaching i keep reminding myself that i have to be careful because i i control the gate to my soul mm -hmm. and my heart mm -hmm. so whatever i'm letting in to get in there it's up to me and you know that humbles me when i would flare up and flare out you know i it keep on ringing out in my in my mind that you know you 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 is the owner of your gate and and i could hear my brother when he said um the the, the verse that he mentioned that our eyes is the gate to our heart mm. and that we have to be careful at what we watch and and you, you come on and you said what well, we listen to what we pay attention to and all of that stuff that's what's influencing our day so these things keep coming back to me and I keep paying attention and mm -hmm. I'm just encouraging everyone else to pay attention to the word when we get it because that's what gonna make our life better and that's what gonna help that's our oil as a matter mm -hmm. of fact that we are storing and gathering so we shouldn't allow the word to just go void and we remain the same we have to put it to action you know, when we hear it the best way you can, let me tell you, I'm not one of the best person that put it to action, but I find out wherever or whenever I apply these words that it works mm. and it works well. So uh, that is my encouragement today. And thank God I'm blessed and thank God for the opportunity to allow me to come on to be with you guys. Praise God. And thank you for that encouraging word, Sister Pam, is so true. We, we put it into practice. We listen over and over, right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And and, and something that, that came to me, I thank you so much, you know, for sharing. And before I even say what came to me, anybody else wanted to say anything? Okay. You know, something uh, Michelle had said before, and it keep on coming up to me, is like, you know, remembering the word. And it's like what the, the Lord was ministering to, to me, at least afterwards, um, you know, it's just, okay, Lisa, the more you, you meditate on the word, the more you put it into practice, the more you listen to it, you're becoming the word, you know? So it becomes less of something, at least it's good to memorize the word. Don't, I'm not trying to take anything up, um, from that. But it's like you were saying to me, you're becoming the word. So if the if I'm becoming the word, it's it's becoming me, you know, because he's living within us anyway, and he's conforming us to the, the image of Christ. To me, it lines up with that scripture that we're being conformed, you know, to the, the image of Christ. We're being transformed, we're we're made in his image. So he is the word. So if if as we are, you know, believing in it eating it, living it, we are being transformed into the word itself. So it's like, okay, it becomes then this way of thinking, it becomes this way of speaking. And, and I thank God that he says, you know, he who begun a good work will continue until the day of Jesus Christ. So we know that even as much as we spend that time, there is always still work to be done. 
um, until he returns. So, you know, it's like we're all going to fall short of his glory, but thank God things are changing. Things are changing and we can have that peace because we, we know that his hand in, is on us and our work is being done. And he, the, the wonderful thing about God is we know that he finishes what he starts and he does all things well. So glory to God for every single topic that, you know, comes up. He's just wonderful. Go ahead, Michelle. Um, hi, everybody. I'm not sure if you're hearing me well. Um, we are. You know, I'm here and I'm so grateful for this uh, platform. It's like if I don't get the Bible studies, like my life is just not going well, you know, at that moment. Um, I'm not actually at home. I'm far away. Right now, it's roughly after eight for me at night. Oh, and wow. I tell you, God has been good. God has been good. It's not anything about boasting or anything. It's just that God has been good. So, so good. And as myself, my life is like up and down. This minute, it's going a wire next minute it's going beautifully this is one of the beauty moment for me mm -hmm. and this morning wherever i am i open the blinds and it's like i'm on the sea actually mm -hmm. and suddenly just looking for a moment i saw a rainbow just suddenly mm -hmm. and i started praising god because for me it's like god is reassuring me that he's there for me you know mm -hmm. and it's in the moment it came, it disappeared. Mm -hmm. You know, by the time I run from my phone and mm -hmm. try to video this rainbow. And my daughter said, mm -hmm. Mommy, video it for me too. By the time I go for her phone and trying to be, it just, you know, it went. Mm -hmm. But I felt so good in my heart this morning, you know, because if we just spare time, you know, just be quiet, as Lisa said, be still in the moment. There's so much blessing in a moment so so much blessing and right now i'm just so happy i'm i'm so at peace i'm so oh my god i'm so happy wow. i have a 23 year old daughter who <laughs> if i ever tell you the story about that but uh, we are all big people here when i got pregnant i didn't want to carry her my first pregnancy and i didn't i didn't you know i'm saying that no with actually feeling like i want to cry but she has been such a blessing you know, mm -hmm. she has been such a blessing. At 23, my daughter carried me on a vacation now to the Maldives, which when she mm -hmm. told me, I have to research, what is Maldives? <laughs> where, is, where is Maldives? You know, but it's a vacation which I've never experienced before. I feel like royalty. And um, God just has been good. God has been good to me. And as I said, a rainbow this morning reassured me that God is there. And as mothers, we need to just do the best we can for our children because we don't know which direction God will turn things around for us. I have been a single mother and, you know, God has been just, even though there are gaps here and there, which is not so pretty, God has been good. And I'm so grateful in my heart. When I say grateful, I feel so grateful and so blessed this morning, you know, but Sometimes we just need to be quiet and still in the moment because God blessing sometimes is just instantaneous. It just at the moment and it shifts, but just be appreciative of the moment when the blessing comes. And that's just my little testimony for this morning. Your beautiful testimony. Thank you for sharing. And, and I'm knowing you're, you're seeing the, the beauty of God in the Maldives. I've heard it's very pretty. Um, so thank God for bringing you guys there and that you're still able to join and, and just blessings over your daughter. And I hope you guys have a wonderful, ex wonderful time there. But thank you for that encouraging testimony, um, Michelle, because we know there's ebbs and flows, you know, with life. So, you know, we really should enjoy the very beautiful moments and even in the moments where it's not, it doesn't look so beautiful, you know. Honestly, there's always still something beautiful happening because if we can really um, just stop and still see him in the midst of the, the moments, even of sadness, that there can still be comfort, there can still be peace, there can still be love, you know, that there can still be the revelation of God's hand um, 
yeah, you can still get something out of the times that are most difficult as well. So we, we thank God that he's always, always working and always with us. And I thank God for the beautiful, you know, just beautiful testimony shared um, today. And if later on someone wants to say something, um, you know, we have time, if we have time to do it, please, you know, please do share. So we're going to go ahead and start with our Bible study this um, today. And we had a, three scriptures to read today. Uh-oh. Um, yeah, we had three scriptures to read today, and I, I know that we're going to run out of time, and this is a topic that I think um, if it's not picked up next week, it will pick up another time because it's just so, as you know, several other, other topics we have just so huge, you know. So the topic today is why water, you know, why, what is its significance in our walk with God? And um, we had a few scriptures. We had 1 John chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. It says, this is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit who bears witness because the spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. And then also John 19, verse 34. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. John 4, verse 14. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water, springing up into everlasting life. Now, water is stated, it, depending on the translation, you'll find it even more. Some say more than 700 times, some say more than 600 times in the Bible. You know, it flows through scripture from beginning to end. In the first book of the Bible and in the last, water is included. The first mention of water is in Genesis chapter one, verse two. It says, the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And the last scripture about water is in the last chapter of the Bible. In Revelations 22, verse 17, it says, and the spirit and the bride say, come, and let him who hears say, come, and let him who thirsts, come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Like blood, water is critical to sustain life. Like That is just so deep. <laughs> you know, I know we've studied blood before, but blood is critical. Water is critical. 70 to 75% of the earth's surface is covered with water. And roughly 70% of an adult's body is made up of water. It is said that the brain and the heart are composed of 73% water and the lungs are about 83% water. And we know that, you know, water can help us as seen, you know, with decreasing the risk of certain types of sicknesses. It flushes out waste and bacteria that can cause disease. So, you know, water is everything. I'm going to open it up to everyone you know what are when you think of water i mean everything that comes comes to your mind and i know some whatever someone says might spark another thought let's just try and capture you know what are some of the characteristics of water you know i i'll start with a couple and then maybe um some others will come to mind it flows you know natural bodies of water are always moving it takes the shape of the vessel that it's in any, any any other thoughts about water? When you think of water, what do you think of? You want me to say a few more? Or? No, water purifies. No, definitely. Water purifies. Water provide um, quench our thirst. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to um, say hydration. This, yeah, some of the time we use water to for deliverance. 
-hmm. Like I went to a Catholic church once and they were sprinkling holy water okay. um, as a form of cleansing and a form of new beginning. And um, water can destroy us too. Like in the flood, which, which um, happened, you know, when God uh -huh. destroyed the world with the flood before, water can destroy. And like even now, right? Can destroy, right? It, right? With right. the flood. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. There, there, there's a lot of, and as you said, 75% of our body is made up with water. So water is very important, like you said. Mm -hmm. Some great ones. Any Anybody else? Anything else so, come to mind? Water, like. Oh, it was Mark. Oh, you're break Say it again, Mark, because you were breaking up. I just going to say um, baptism. When you're being baptized, you're baptized, at least at our church, in water. Okay. Okay. Water is used for baptism. All right. And I just want to say water yep. is like, uh, it contains life, like the fish and all the, mm. uh, yeah, it contains life. Okay. Awesome. And welcome, Fire Tablet. Not sure. Again, I think that might be Cheryl. If not, um, welcome. If you want to put your name or put your name in the chat or something, but welcome. Ma, are you saying something again? No, I'm trying to drive and put myself on mute. Oh, okay. No problem. All right. So I love, love that, you know, it quenches our thirst. It's for hydration. Um, some churches sprinkle holy, holy water to cleanse. It's a form of new beginning. Can It can destroy, you know, like the flood. Um, baptism, it's used for baptism. It contains life. Um, I'm just going to go back and see if I had any other. So the question for the person who just joined is, what are some of the characteristics of water? So if any others come to mind, um, let me know. Uh, as I mentioned, it takes the shape of the vessel that it is in. It transforms, right? It can evaporate. Um, I thought of it as also kind of cyclical in a way. When I think of rain, rain, it come down, comes down, then it goes up into the atmosphere, it goes into the clouds, and then it's released again on earth. And, it, you know, that's just a process that keeps on going. Um, it can change depending on what is impacting it, like such as temperature. It can be hot, can be cold, can change the ice, it can dissipate. It's there even when we can't see it. Water is actually in the air. It is above us. It is below us. It's around us, right? Um, you know, we see the rain, we see the seas, the oceans, the rivers. It purifies, like someone said um, before, it is essential for health. It can dissolve things, take them away. If you put, you know, sugar in water, it's as if the sugar was not there. You know, it can dissolve our salt. Um, it quenches, someone said, so it refreshes and it can cause things to grow. Things grow, you know, with water. Water, any others? Did I miss any? Anybody else think of any others with water? What does water do? Um, Lisa, I think of it as we normally say in the layman term, water is life. Because without mm -hmm. water, we can't. Water is life. Right. Water contains life and water is life. Right. Amen. Okay, awesome. All right. So I know it's, that's a lot to remember, but um if you can keep some in mind as we talk about water. Now, water like God is multifaceted. You know, like we said, water sustains life and water can take life. Two very different things, you know, opposite ends of the spectrum. When we think of Noah, um, actually, when we look in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 20, it says, when once the divine, being God, long-suffering, waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight souls, were saved through water. Well, we also know many died in that water, right? God flooded the whole earth. So only eight people, it says, lived. You know, they were saved by the water. So it brought life for some and death for others. Water was used in the first plague against the Egyptians who refused to let God's people 
go so that they could worship him in the wilderness. And we're going to be talking about water in different ways, just like that, you know, the all the different things we said, how we thought of water in so many different ways. We can see water, you know, being used in different ways in the Bible. And it's all, you know, to build up our knowledge of, of God and what he's doing, you know, through the use of water. Water was used as again in the first plague against the Egyptians who refused to let the, God's people go so that they could worship him. I'm just going to read Exodus 7, a uh, few scriptures there. It says, then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is unyielding. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning as he goes out to the river. Confront him on the bank of the Nile. And take in your hand the staff that has changed that was changed into a snake. Then say to him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has sent me to say to you, let my people go so that they may worship me in the wilderness. But until now, you have not listened. This is what the Lord says. By this, you will know that I am the Lord. With the staff that is in my hand, I will strike the water of the Nile and it will be changed into blood. The fish in the Nile will die and the river will stink. The Egyptians will not be able to drink its water. The Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron, take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over the streams and the canals, over the ponds and all the reservoirs, and they will turn into blood. Blood will be everywhere in Egypt, even in the vessels of wood and stone. So even things that people had taken to their, their homes, containing water, everything would turn into blood. The fish in the Nile died and the river smelled so bad that the Egyptians could not drink its water. Again, blood was everywhere in Egypt. Now looking at the Nile, the Nile is the longest river in the world. It runs 4,100 miles. And of course, all those 4,000 miles are not in Egypt, but a, a good chunk of it is in Egypt. So it was the lifeline for the people of Egypt. I'm going to ask someone if they can put their phone on mute. Okay, here we go. And if you need to speak, please unmute. Hi, Marjorie. Morning. Okay. So, um, again, going back to the Nile, you know, again, it's the lifeline for Egypt. The Egyptians were a pagan culture. And so they worshipped a wide variety of nature gods and attributed to their powers, the natural, you know, phenomena, whatever they see, they see the rain, you know, if it's cloudy, if um, it, it just everything they saw, they attributed to their nature God. There was a God of the sun, of the river, of crops, um, events like, you know, if they had a flood of the Nile and of course the flood, the overflow would water the crops, they would see it as evidence of their God's power. And my research showed actually that there were at least three different names of gods that Egyptians considered to be the god of the Nile. So again, it's a pagan culture. They don't know, you know, the god of all. They have all these different gods. So there, there God decided to show, you know, well, before I, I do that, what do you think God was communicating by turning the Nile into blood? Given what I just shared, you know, what do you think he was communicating by turning the Nile into, into blood. Any thoughts, anyone? Since it, this, this was their source of life, you know, they had put a God over it, you know, fishes in the, in the Nile. This is their source of not just drinking, but eating as well. Um, what do you think? Not saying any, any thoughts come to your mind. What, you know, why do you think God chose to, you know, show, do that plague that involved? What about like um? So he was showing that you know like water is vital for life, mm -hmm. and he can take away that water where they would not be able to survive in this in life, and like um maybe um he was trying to say that he can provide for the Israelites, and it just says um he's providing for the Egyptians because he's the one that that, get, that has the sources to give them so he can provide for the Israelites and he can take take um take life from the Egyptians. I think that's pretty good. That sounds pretty right. I don't know if anyone wants to add anything on onto it. Thank you, Jen. 
Any any other thoughts on this? Well, for me, Lisa, he was showing that them that he is the true and living God. And he's punishing them in a way where all their sources, it affects all their sources, you know? So for me, I think he was just showing them that he is God and whatever he said, that is what will happen. Amen, amen. And, and we know several several plagues came after this, right? But this was the first one. And I love that he addresses the source of life. Go ahead, Sister Pam, you wanted to say something? Yes, you're right, because water is the essential source of life. So with him showing up right there, he's showing who is in charge, who is in control. And they, they, we all have to be totally dependent upon him. Amen. So capture their attention that I am your dependent. Mm -hmm. Amen. I love that. He was, and But yet, he was providing still for his people, right? It's the Egyptians they saw that this is you know whatever their their gods are called this is the god of, of the resource god of life but you know what you know they had um their people to their magic um Sarah Pharaoh had his Egyptians to I mean his uh, magicians too so you know they did the same they they not in the Nile but you remember it's like even before this happened was when um, they had like a showdown, <laughs> I call it a showdown when, when God turned, you know, um, Moses's rod into this bigger, you know, rod that ate up the other snakes because they were saying, oh, we could do this too. You know, the rod was turned into a snake. They turned their things into snakes too, but God was showing, I am more powerful, you know? So he, he that was the first, I think the first, if not one of the first signs. And then, then here comes now the plague. So I love the message. Everybody is right on the mark, right? So he's he's you know he's painting a picture. He's communicating the earth. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and the earth shows His glory, right? So again, what we learned about that before is coming into play. God is showing who He is through this plague. Yet everybody can see it, but at this point, you know they're still denying. Um, the people of Egypt are still denying who he is. And even the children of Israel, who he is doing this in front of too, they're still, you know, this is them still getting to know who he is. So God turned water into blood when Pharaoh refused to let the children of Israel go. And it was also used as the last weapon against the, the Egyptians in the same, in the same place he saved his people. You know, when I looked at it, said, you know, Israel's back, when they went, you know, when they were released and they went, you know, they were traveling into the wilderness. Their back was against the wall, right? Because at this point, you know, Pharaoh, God is harming Pharaoh's heart and he decides, you know, why, why did we let them go? So he's deciding to, to pursue, pursue them. So it says in Exodus 14, now the Lord God spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel that they turn and camp before Pi Hahiroth between Migdal and the sea. Opposite Baal Zephon, you shall camp before it by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are bewildered by the land. The wilderness has closed them in. So, you know, they, they have no choice and they're, they're backed up against the sea. They can't go anywhere. And Pharaoh thinks they just don't know. They, they don't, they're puzzled by the land. They don't know. Because remember, they have been here in Egypt in slavery. So Exodus 14 continues, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians, on their chariots and on their horsemen. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And when the morning appeared, the sea returned to its full depth, while the Egyptians were fleeing into it. So the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Then the waters returned and covered the chariots, the horsemen and all the army of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them as they were pursuing the children of Israel. Not so much as one of them remained, but the children of Israel had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Psalm 106 verse 11 says, the waters covered their enemies. There was not one of them. So, you know, God started out with water, with the plague, and he now finishes what he started in destroying the enemies that not one of them was left again with water. 
but it, it again the water was doing two different things like we said water sustains life and by flood water you know can also take life water was used you know to sustain the life of god's people it is said of the old testament that the old testament is jesus concealed and in the new testament it is jesus revealed because nowhere in the old testament do you hear the name jesus it's not until the new testament that you know he comes on the scene he's on the earth itself but we know he was always there from the beginning the john 5 verse 39 says you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. So it's been testifying of Jesus from the very beginning. He says, but you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. He was revealing himself as the water that saves, but they still couldn't see. You know, the children of Israel still didn't know, still didn't know who God was, still didn't know who Jesus was, but God is taking them on a journey. And he uses water here. You know, I want us to stay on water and not open up a, a discussion on baptism. I know that's one of the, you know, attribute, one of the things that water is used for. But because I want to stay on water itself. But in the New Testament, it tells us what was happening to the Israelites in this miracle of crossing the Red Sea, which they themselves, they didn't know at the time. They didn't understand. First Corinthians chapter 10, 10 tells us, moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud. Our fathers being the people of um, the children of Israel at that time. This is now someone speaking in the New Testament. I believe it was Paul. All passed through the sea. This is the Red Sea. And also, actually, the Jordan later on, which we will talk about another time with the, um, in the topic of baptism. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. But with most of them, God was not well pleased for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Again, that's first, first Corinthians chapter 10 verses one through five. So they were saved through water. This was a part of their salvation process, though Later, they rebelled against God, though they had no clue that this is what was happening, that, you know, it says, well, they drank of the spiritual rock and they were baptized into Moses. So, you know, they're just thinking they're leaving Egypt unaware of, you know, all the spiritual things that are also happening as they leave, you know, leave from where they were. As I mentioned, this was part of their salvation process. The Hebrew word for salvation is yasa, Y-A, S as in Sam, A, which means to save, to help in distress, rescue, deliver, and set free. The children of Israel went from bondage to freedom through the water. Anybody, any comments before we go any, any further? Anything come into your mind as you're hearing this? Okay, we'll continue. And if anything does come, let me know. So again, the children of Israel went from bondage, right? They were slaves in the land of Egypt. And now they have been freed from their oppressor as they go, went through the water. They were delivered, yet their oppressor was completely taken out. Exodus um, 1, it's, you know, I wanted to take a step back though, because sometimes we have to remember how hard an experience was to really appreciate what God is doing in the time of our victory. Like, you know, it can be so caught up by this great thing that he said, you know, I think to get the full appreciation is really to go back and look at the difficult time. Exodus 1 says, now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And we know Joseph where it was, you know, Pharaoh's right, the, the Pharaoh's right hand man, because, you know, Pharaoh's a, a title. And um, he said to his people, you know, Joseph is gone, has died now. There's a new Pharaoh. And he said to his people, look, the people of the children of Israel are more, more and mightier than we. Now, they are the head of the land. And now they're saying these children of Israel are mightier than we. And it makes me think of even us, you know, and um, 
even the scripture later, scripture later on as, you know, when they passed the Jordan and all that, and, you know, when they went to spy out the land and the, the men who went, um, who came back with a bad report, there were 12 sent and only, we you know, Joshua and Caleb came back with a good report, but the others um, were like, no, the, you know, we are, they are giants in the land. And we are grasshoppers in our own eyes. And so are we in theirs, you know, and the same, it's like, we are more than conquerors. We have, we, you know, the enemy knows that we are mightier because of what Christ did. But if you don't have that knowledge, right, you see yourself as smaller, but the enemy yeah. here knows. Go ahead. Is that Jen? Can yeah. I, I just thought of something, you know, like, um, the children of Israel were, Israel were in bondage for years and years. And when God took them out and they kept going back to the, um, to the old gods, the Egyptian gods, um, every time Moses would go up to the mountain to talk to God, he'd come back in there, like praising a, a calf, a golden calf or whatever. And I'm just thinking like, sometimes, you know, we, God deliver us from something physically, a big, a, give us a big miracle, but our mind is still in bondage. We don't really mm -hmm. know how to like get to the next level in God. And we go back because we take on habits, like, because we, we, our mind is still in bondage. We may be physically out of bondage, but our mind is still mm -hmm. not there yet. That's deep. Our, our, our mind is still set on the old ways. Yeah. They say, yeah, forgetting things that those things which are past, you know. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love that. Any any anybody else want to share? You're you're so right. That's exactly that, you know. Anybody else have any thoughts? Yeah. I you know, I remember when I um was first one of the first times I actually sat down to read that whole thing. I was like, oh, you know, these Israelites are getting on my nerves, but <laughs> You know, as a, as more years pass, I said, well, Lisa, that's us, you know, as people. That is how we are in different ways. In modern day times, it shows up in different ways. But I love what you said, um, Jen, their, their minds, they were, they were physically free, but mentally. It's like, you know, it's like Bob Martin said, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. There was still that mental slavery going on. They were still attached to the old way while God was bringing them into, into freedom. I love that. Again, any other comments, you know, please, please share. Um, but going, just going back again and looking at what was happening to them, it says, you know, the Pharaoh said, look, the people, the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply. And it happened in the event of war that they also join our enemies and fight against us and so go up out of the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh supply cities, Python and Ramesses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were in dread of the children of Israel. So the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, in mortar, in brick, and in all manner of service in the fields, all their service in which they made them serve was with rigor. So their their life was really, really hard, you know, really hard. And as Jen said, you know, we know how many times while they were in the wilderness, they they are wanting to turn back, you know, come let us let us get for ourselves new leaders, come let us stone them. I mean, all sort of things. Meanwhile, God had already brought them through, saved them as they were going through the water. I'm um, just looking at the few scriptures that talk about living waters. Jeremiah 17, verse 13, Jer John 4, verse 10 says, O Lord, the hope of Israel, all who forsake you shall be ashamed. Those who depart from me, mean God, shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. And John 4, verse 10, Jesus answered and, and said to her, this is the woman at the well, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And we know there are so many scriptures about water, but it's like, I would, if he, you know, if you knew kind of that, that part, go back to it. I connected it with the Israelites again. It's like, if they really knew 
you know, who God was, who Jesus was at the time, if they knew, not just hearing his God. Because you know, remember when, when Moses said, who shall I say, you know, um, has sent me? And he said, I am. But if they really understood who I am, they would have seen how huge this thing was of him taking them through the water and taking them out of their, their bondage. Um, John 7 verse 37, it says, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, let them come to me and drink. You know, he's saying he is the fountain of living waters. Now, we're going to move and, and look at water as part of purification. That was water that saved the people. Now, looking, um, I went back to the Old Testament, right? Um, because he shows us, he explains a number of things in the Old Testament. And it's good to, to read those so we can understand what's happening in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, there were several rit rituals that needed to be done for purification and consecration. You know, blood we know was an integral part, um, which we have studied blood, and uh, but water was also critical to the process. You know, water can't do what blood does, and, and blood doesn't do what water does. You know, there is overlap, they're working together, right? And the Old Testament is still, they had to um, shed blood for their sins, right? But they also use water to purify from sins. Um, so they're working together, but they're also distinctions. Here's an example of how water was used um, for purification. It says in Numbers chapter 19, verse 9, a man who is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer, and this is one, you know, had been sacrificed, and put them in a ceremonially clean place outside the camp. And I just want you to pay attention to that. That whole kind of ritual was the, it's called, you know, it was a ceremony, ceremonially clean. It, it does come up again, that term in the New Testament. They are to be kept for, by the Israelites community for use in the water of cleansing. I'll go back. A man who is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer and put them in a ceremonially clean place outside the camp. They are to be kept by the Israelite community for use in the water of cleansing. It is for purification. Anyone out in the open who touches someone who has been killed with a sword or someone who has died a natural death or anyone who touches a human bone or a grave will be unclean for seven days. For the unclean person, put some ashes from the burn purification offering into a jar and pour fresh water over them. Then a man who is ceremonially clean is to take some hyssop dip it in the water and sprinkle the tent and all the furnishings and, and the people who were there. He must also sprinkle anyone who has touched a human bone or a grave or anyone who has killed, has been killed or anyone who has died a natural death. The man who is clean is to sprinkle those who are unclean on the third and the seven days and on the seventh day, he is to purify them. Those who are being cleansed must wash their clothes, again, water and bathe with water. And that evening they will be clean. But if those who are unclean do not purify themselves, they must be cut off from the community because they have defiled the sanctuary of the Lord. The water of cleansing has not been sprinkled on them and they are unclean. This is a lasting ordinance for them. Then it goes on to say, the man who sprinkles the water of cleansing must wash his clothes and anyone who touches the water of cleansing, you know, will be unclean. A clean man is carrying, you know, the water of cleansing, but the, that water of cleansing becomes unclean because people are washing in that. Anything that an unclean person touches becomes unclean, and anyone who touches it becomes unclean till evening. Ezekiel 36 verse 25 says, I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities. Again, you know, this is in the Old Testament, the use of water in our purification, you know, process. Yes, there is the blood, the shedding of the blood to um, pay for the, the, the sins, um, but there's also the purification and cleansing by water. There's a per blood, water, and fire were all part of God's you know, purification process. Hebrews 9 verse 22 says, in fact, the law 22 and 23, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. 
It was necessary then for the copies of the heavenly things to be purified with these sacrifices, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than this. So, you know, water has a, it, it's very important in God's, you know, um, you know, making the people pure, making the people clean. But again, it's blood and water is separate. And I'm just going to go back to our, one of the scriptures that we had to read, which says, you know, he, this is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. It is the spirit who bears witness because the spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. So, the, the you know, our salvation process involves the, the three, the Holy Spirit, the water, and blood. Any thoughts? Anybody want to um, share anything? You know, what are your thoughts? on that a water having a purpose blood having a purpose you know the holy spirit having a purpose and even we talked about fire because we know fire was used in that time as well and, and god said the fire should continually burn but any anything come into your mind as you think about this this process anyone I think it's fascinating. I think it's just so, you know, just awesome how God breaks down, you know, this thing. It, 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 the, um, the three are one, you know, and, and is in the New Testament. Yet he's telling them in the Old Testament, you know, the process. Uh, we know, with the, again, the shedding of the blood and then the purpose for the water. So then because each has a part, you know, that's why I said Jesus came not just by water, but also blood, because they both, they both play a part. And I, I don't want to go ahead of myself. I have something um, that, you know, came to my my mind, um, but I don't know, might, may, might save, it, save it for later or save it for our other discussion on water, because I realize it's 12.04. Um, but again, if anyone has any thoughts, they want to stop me, just, just go ahead and, and jump in. Um, you know, out of water, we know springs up blessings and life. You know, the wages of sin is death and the shedding of blood signifies death. But it's like the, the water is like, it, like all the things we said about water before, right? You know, water is needed for things to grow. You know, water can spring up new life. So part of what I was thinking is that, um, you know, and I, actually I'll go back to our scripture, read another one. John 19 says, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came, came out. You know, there's some that say, okay, um, well, I'll go back again. The purpose, it, both are working together as part as, of our journey with God. You know, the water, the blood is playing the price for our sins. The water it's like making new things in us. It's, it's to me connected to the scripture um, that, you know, we're new creations now. You know, we died with Christ and now we live with him. And so to me, that's part of what the water does. You know, as we said, it's what is bringing up new life in us. It's a new beginning. It contains life. So now we have a new life with water, with that whole process. So that's why it's two things, the blood, which has its part and the water also. I hear someone wanting to say something. Go ahead, I was, I was saying, like, the whole water process back mm -hmm. in the Old Testament, that's a lot of work, you know? A lot of work, just like when they have to um, mm -hmm. uh, sacrifice an uh, uh, animal with blood, with no mm -hmm. blemish. The water process that they had to do was a lot of work. So um, when Jesus came, he, he changed all of that, too, with the water. Amen. He did all the work. <laughs> You know, it did all the work. You're right, Jen. That was a lot of work. And it had to be done. You know, there were detailed instructions. You're right that they had to, to follow. It was certainly a process. Yeah. Anybody else? Any comments? Okay. All right. Um, you know, by his blood, God, he, Jesus paid the price for our sins. And by water, he washed us clean. When Jesus washed the disciples' feet, 
you know, I, I, it's funny, he, he was just like connecting the parts, you know, as I was looking at this, he said, you know, in John chapter three, you know, he's with his disciples. Um, and he says, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to, to the end. Um, you know, Jesus' disciples were already saved, right? They believed in him. But it says in John chapter 13, um, verses three through 10, um, it says, Jesus knew that the father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal. This is the final, you know, the last supper, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean. It's like they were already saved by Jesus. They believed in Jesus. The, the word says, you know, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, then you are saved. But he's also talking this other part, the other part of the process, the blood, you know, the blood does its work, the water does its work. You don't have to, you know, part, you're already, he says, those who have had a bath only need to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. Now everything, you know, he, this is the like completion of the process. I was thinking of the the man on the, the cross, you know, people are like, oh, um, there are so many, you know, different debates about this and oh, what? I, again, I don't want to go into baptism, but it's like, you know, Jesus, Jesus, he believed in Jesus. So he was saved. So he didn't do that other part. Right. But I, I believe, you know, Jesus has a way he does all things well. He covers all bases. So we don't know even when he was going to to paradise with Jesus, what that process involved, because even when you look back and this is an unrelated point, just to to um, just validate the point that Jesus covers all bases. When, when there's a scripture, and I, I wish I had it right on hand, but talks about when Jesus, you know, um, died, like he went down into um, hell and he preached. And he preached to those who said, you know, those who were disobedient from Noah's time. That's who he preached to. So it's like all had an opportunity to, you know, hear the word, hear the gospel, you still have often when you when you're preached to you have a decision to make do you believe or you don't believe so i believe you know that everything everything was covered you know in the process of um he covers all bases when he going through the water they were they were saved it's like everything uh, that is talked about being baptized into moses so you know if people think baptism just started with john when john was baptizing it says no he was doing it even then it just they didn't know it as baptism then. So it's just so, to me, fascinating how God just covers it all. Who He puts the pieces together. And I mean, hopefully I'm explaining it well enough for um to understand. But any anybody have anything to share? Any any comments at this time? Lisa, mm -hmm. I have a quick comment. You know what came to my mind? And I stand corrected. Is that this man, people looking at him as an example of um, just repenting at the hour, at the last minute and all of that stuff that people said because Jesus saved this man at the last minute. Mm -hmm. What came to my mind is that this man was already a believer because if, it, if he was not a believer, he could not have prayed that prayer at that last minute. That faith he had in Jesus Christ was not just existed because he was there and about to give up his life. Mm -hmm. But you know, sometimes we sin. As Christian, we keep sinning. And we keep trusting in God to forgive us and to help us and to show us his grace mm -hmm. and his mercy. 
I just believe that this man sees the last moment with his faith and asks Jesus Christ to forgive him. And it mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. So people that is remaining in their sin and presumptuously sinning and knowing what to do and not doing it, waiting for that last moment, like the thief, I believe they could be classified as one of those foolish virgins. Or the lamb. But, yes. But you know what? We don't know, to me, I if someone's on their deathbed, for example, and they don't they know Jesus, but, you know, a chaplain comes in and prays a prayer, they may, might just accept Jesus at the last minute. You know, whether, you know, Jesus talks about the parable, right? The parable where the, the people were called to the field to work. And then the people who had been working from the beginning, right, were complaining that the people who came at the end got the same wage they did. Salvation is like that. Whether you have it at the very, you know, for 10 years or you have it just on the last day, it's still salvation, you know? So to, to the most important thing is to be saved and while we're here yes we want to you know you get so much more when you we come to that realization earlier so we can really use it to to have the abundant life right because he's he's given us the tools they're there i've given you everything for life and godliness so you know you can suffer when the when you know christ is already there he's already saved us he's already the word is there when when um, I have a friend who's reading the Bible and he's like, Lisa, you know, everything, everything is in the Bible. And I'm like, yeah, everything is there. But it's like, if we didn't use that earlier on, you know, we, we could have used it earlier on. It's like, I say to myself, the things that I know now, I wish I had known them when I was much younger, but nevertheless, thank God for salvation now, you know, um, but anyone else has a comment to share? Okay. It's 1214. And I know I'm not, you know, I, I still have, go ahead. Someone else wanted to say something. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. I came on late, but as I was listening um, to that part that you were reading earlier about the, the, um, the water cleansing versus the blood cleansing and, you know, the law and um, where Jen made the comment that it was a lot of work, you know, it just made me think of um, how thankful I am for Jesus that he came and fulfilled the law, you know, so that we wouldn't have to go through any of that. And um, I also, uh, I had mixed feelings because I also feel badly for the, um, the Orthodox Jews who still practice a lot of the elements of the law. I'm like, how do they do that from day to day? It's so tedious you know, to try to remember that. But I also thought of um, the power that is in Jesus Christ as it relates to that story with the woman with the issue of blood and how she was unclean because, you know, you read all of that and she was unclean because she had an issue of blood, you know, and um, she took her unclean, uh, Jesus took her uncleanliness and made her clean you know just just in just in his anointing alone you know i'm like that's awesome you know because by the law jesus was a hundred percent man so he should have became unclean right but instead of him becoming unclean his um cleanliness overpowered her uncleanness and just cleaned her you know and i'm thinking you know for us today that's that's how it is like when you come in contact with Christ, you know, he cleanses you through fire, water, blood, everything, you know, you're, you're, you've been purified and cleansed. And, you know, that's why the Bible talks about your sins going into the sea of forgetfulness and they're not remembered anymore. You know, so I'm just thinking about how Jesus truly is the one um sacrifice the one blood that was shed for the remission of sin and you know when i think about it i'm like okay so past present and future even the sin that i didn't commit yet like that's some powerful blood water fire everything you know right there that that's a powerful cleansing you know when you think of that you know 
we are presented faultless, you know, before the throne of his glory. Um, Jude, Jude, Jude 24, Jude verse 24, you know, now unto him that is able, you know, so that just, it just makes me think of all of that. And I'm like, thank God, I don't have to worry about this. What? <laughs> Cause I don't know how I would manage if I was, you know, living under that dispensation, you know, because I, 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 I'm listening to you, but also I'm thinking in my mind, well, what if your child is unclean? Like, so you can't, you can't, you can't attend to your child because that's going to make you unclean. You know, it's, it's too complex. And I'm so, you know, this just, just makes me even more thankful, um, um, that, G that God sent Jesus, you know, who, mm -hmm. What, when when we when we come in contact with him with our all of our filthiness and our uncleanness he automatically he's not god don't get dirty from messing with dirty people you know and mm -hmm. that means jesus and um you know if they didn't really understand that in the new testament which is why they would say oh he's hanging around with prostitutes and tax collectors because he is like the ultimate water and blood right there in the mm -hmm. embodiment of all of that. And they mm -hmm. didn't get it. You know, he cleanses everything. Everything that he touches is automatically cleansed. You cannot, mm -hmm. we cannot. And, 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 oh my gosh. And I'm sorry, but please just let me say this one last thing. And I think as modern day Christians and believers, if we would understand that we would not hesitate to pray because a lot of times people hesitate to go to God because they feel so dirty. Like mm -hmm. what? That's like, that's mm -hmm. like hesitating to bed because you're too dirty. Like, mm -hmm. no, when you go in the shower, you're going to get clean. Like, go ahead, go ahead and bathe. Please do. That's the only way to get clean, mm -hmm. you know? And, 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 and it also speaks to unbelievers who, when you try to minister to people, they say, Oh, I'm not ready for come church yet because you know, let me fix this first. You know, no, 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 no. You, you have it, you have it in reverse. Mm -hmm. Come to Christ and He's gonna fix everything. He's gonna make you clean. He's gonna mm -hmm. take away your your desires mm -hmm. for smoking, drinking, fornication, whatever it is, you know. So um, this is this is just a really a powerful, powerful lesson. I can't say that. Um, I fully, I'm going to have to go back and listen because mm -hmm. I can't say I fully understand the law aspect of it, mm -hmm. but I know, thank God, I don't need to, to, to make it to heaven, you know, because mm -hmm. it's so complex. It's mm -hmm. just, I, I'm listening to you and I'm like, gosh, that's a lot. That's so complicated. You know, it's hard to teach that, to explain that, but, but Jesus part is easy, you know? So thank God. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Amen. I love that. I love that. I love what you said about the prayer piece Love the whole thing. And, you know, to say, you know, people feel sometimes condemned and unclean, you know, because of what they've done and, you know, shame, but he's the one who's going to make us clean, you know, because he came by blood and he came by water. And that's what water does. Water cleanses. And we had a bunch of things that we listed that what water does as we know, he uses, you know, thing in a, things in the natural to explain the spiritual things as well. God doesn't make it that complicated, right? He makes it very simple so we can understand. I love that. Love that connection. He is the one that makes us clean. We don't have because he is he comes by water and he comes by blood. And I'm I'm going to just do one little piece and I'm going to stop because it's um, 1220. But, you know, in our. It, it talk about you know, in the Old Testament and the process that I have to go through, you know, when they were unclean and the washing of this and the washing of that, you know, it, it, it's a lot, um, as we said. But, you know, I, I just think God is so intentional, right? We know he, he, his moves are all planned out just like he already has beautiful plans for each and every one of our lives. He had this plan from before he created man. And it's just, you know, just he does these little things along the way, powerful things. Did you ever think, you know, I was just thinking, I'm like, Jesus's first miracle in the New Testament involved water. You know, in, in, in the book of John, it says on the third day, you know, he's at, we know he's at this wedding. His a wedding took place in Cana, in Galilee. Jesus's mother was there and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus's mother said to him, they have no more wine. 
Woman, and he responds, woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing. We talk about the ceremonial cleansing. So we know these jars, I mean, it's dirty, right? It's used for ceremonial washing. You're washing your hands, whatever dirt is on your hands. You're washing your feet in that dusty time, whatever dust is on your feet. These are the jars used to, it, it contains the dirtiness that has been washed off. It says, nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars, you know, with water. So they, they fill them to the brim. Then they told, then he told them, now draw some, some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so. And the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, right? Probably if he knew he wouldn't want to drink from that. Though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first. And then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. These dirty, these vessels that hold dirtiness were used to serve the best thing. What do you think of this? What do you think God is saying through this? Anyone? Hi, Lisa. Hi, everyone. Hi, Marjorie. You know, when I was I was listening to you with um about the water, that I continued thinking about Jesus' first miracle. Mm. Very turn water into wine. But one of the things that really is profound in this miracle is that Jesus didn't even touch anything. He just said to them, take the pot and fill it with water. He didn't have to touch. He just spoke the word. Get, get the pot, fill it with water, and bring it to the, to the table. Mm. He didn't even pray, per se. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He gave my instruction to fill the pot, and I, I always see it as, as one of the most miraculous action that Jesus did. He, he, he just said, okay, fill the pot, bring it to the table. And when they went, they didn't get water. They got the best wine. Mm -hmm. And that was his first miracle. And that just, for me, it is so profound because it is saying to me, do not limit God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do not put a box around him and in our little mind, think of the way he is going to do things because he does things outside of the box. He does things to blow our mind at all times, you know? And yes, I like this message because it's, re it's reminding us that God does not use one method to clean us. We go through the fire we go through the blood and we go through the water for purification. At whatever period in time he wants to use whatever method, he chooses that method. You know, maybe this time he think we should go through the fire. So he throw um, struggles of life on, on us, which represent, to me, it represents fire because we go through all these temptations and all through these struggles in order for us, for us to see God or who he is. And then another time, he, he brought us through the water to, to cleanse us in, 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 in this period of time that we, are, that we are going through. So I'm just amazed at God, amazed at him because he just does things in his own style, you know, and in his own way. Amen, amen. He does all working together for our good. Praise God. And anybody else? I love what you shared, Marjorie. Thank you. Does anyone else have any take on that scripture of, that we just read about the first miracle? Lisa, I didn't hear the scripture. What was the scripture? It was a scripture um, when Jesus performed his first miracle, turning water into wine. Okay. So um, what I'm thinking is that, as we all know, God have uh, the ultimate power 
and um, he revealed himself through Jesus Christ. That's how we get to know God and what he's capable of doing. So I think at that moment, he just wants to show them that he is the source. He is the provider. And um, and that Jesus was representing him and he could do anything okay. at any time that he chose to. So um, it wasn't too early and it wasn't too, too, too late. You know, he could have made it just like the other ordinary wine too. But it, I think he, he, he might have done it to capture the attention of the people that um that because the, the this is the final serving of wine it don't mean it's the worst you know because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. some people might think okay we eat first then we have the best but he might be showing them that you know the best basket can also be for last you never know however i choose to do it i do it he says, um, better the end of a thing, right? Than the beginning. Once we are walking with Christ, it's a better life now. But I want to ask, why do you think he used the jars that were used for ceremonial washing? Why would he use those? He's very intentional, you know. So, you know, it could be just, he could just say, oh, you know, nearby there were six stone water jars. Um, but he says the kind used for ceremonial washing. How does that connect to him? changing the water, you know, into wine using those vessels. Um, I think he's showing us that um as you said, those 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 jars were were dirty as they were used for ceremonial washing and whatever. I guess he's showing us that he is able to use dirty vessels to produce good things. Mm -hmm. So if 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 we um exemplify that to our lives we can see that he uses the the base things of 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 the world to glorify himself he uses dirty dirty vessels paul usually killed christians and yet still paul came out to write most of the new testament as we know um a lot, a, a lot, a, a lot, a lot of persons. We, we, we were not good. We were all sinners. But God uses the bad things. Even the Bible, David was a murderer. He was an adulterer. But yes, he was a man of God's own heart, and God used him in his in, in his own way. So He's just showing us. He uses to me. He uses those dirty vessels to prove to us that He can use dirty things to produce good things. Amen. Doesn't matter how dirty we are and how sinful we think we are, or we are, he's able to produce the best out of those dirty things. Amen. 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 Love that, Marjorie. And he's water, he's life. So it, they were cleansed. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, go ahead, Kara. Yes, I was thinking in the same way that Marjorie, um, in also in that light, and um that Jesus uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Mm -hmm. And that's a perfect example of that. I did not even realize that detail as many times as I read that story that he used a dirty vessel. But um, also um, uh, one of the scripture that came to mind is um, that his strength is made perfect in weakness. You know, um, it, it's like, it's like light um in a light that shows up in a dark place you know the 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 his strength is made perfect in weakness because the the vessel that is dirty that they would think would not be good you know it's unclean jesus just made it clean and you know it's like it's like kind of like um how in Isaiah 61, he talks about beauty for ashes. You know, Jesus is just, he, is, mm -hmm. he just likes to transform things. He just mm -hmm. really likes to shine in everything. It can't be just, 
you know, and, and that's why he said he didn't come for the righteous because they're already righteous in their own eyes. You know, he wants something where when it, when he does it, we know that, wow, this has to be, mm -hmm. you know, supernatural, you know, he's looking for opportunities to do the supernatural. And that's what that was. He had an opportunity to do something that was supernatural, mind blowing, confounding to the wise you know so yeah that's that's my um comment on that amen I, I love the comments love the comments um it's so profound right yeah you're right Carrie it's it, you know we it can it's easy to gloss over that part right that they were you know vessels for cleansing you know and so that he used that and he's always ministering talk, saying something to us you know, even through the little details. Um, Sister Pam, you wanted to say something else? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought okay. I was muted. Sorry. Oh, that's, okay. <laughs> that's all right. Um, okay, so we are going to wrap up here. It's not done, you know, um, but just kind of tabling it, it it here, you know, and just with the, the last point, um, you know, he, we know he made something new with the water. As Kara said, he transforms, you know, he transforms with the water. Um, in the same place of dirty, dirtiness and uncleanness, he makes the best things. And Marjorie talked about so many, you know, people that he used in the Bible. He just makes the best things. So I, I love that. You know, we can go to him with all, you know, the the our weaknesses, our things that, you know aren't the most upstanding parts of our personality or life or the things that don't reflect beauty, but he's going to take that and, and, and give beauty for ashes, like you said, care and make something beautiful out of something that, you know, someone would want to toss away or hide, you know, hiding our, our personalities, hiding, you know, this, this flaw within ourselves, but God will take that and give and make the best out of it, you know, I, I really, really, really love, you know, love how God is ministering through this message. I'm like, it's so deep that there's there's so much more, but we'll take it up again next week, you know, God's willing. Um, and I I just would like to share this screen as, as you know, we'd like the platform to grow, others to come to know the word of God. Just wanted to share um, the way in which they can do that to join us on Zoom each week. We meet on Zoom. Um, one second, I'm just going to share the slide. So the information is there um, for anyone who wants to join us. We meet every Saturday and um, on Zoom, 10 o'clock um, Jamaica time, 11 in America Eastern time and 4 p.m. in the UK. I'm just gonna stop sharing here. And with that, um, I'm just good for online, those online, thank you for joining us today and we'll meet again um, next week.